Yo, what's going on, y'all? I'm JB Hoops, and today I've got my Big Board 3.0. March Madness just wrapped up this week with UConn bringing it home. So in this video, I've put together my top 60 prospects into seven tiers. And make sure to like the video and subscribe if you enjoy this type of content. And let's just get right into it with some honorable mentions. So I think I'll have around 45 honorable mentions. The guys highlighted in green are my 60 through 70 ranked prospects. And there's also other guys that might be in my next big board once I get around to deep dives on some more fringe prospects. But for my big board 3.0, I've just got a top 60. Alright, now let's get right into tier 7 with my prospects ranked 60 through 45. Starting us off at 60, I have Kevin McCullough Jr., the 6'6 senior out of Kansas. He's an excellent defender that just makes winning plays. He has quick hands as well as the strength and foot speed to guard 2 through 4. Like many prospects, the shot will be the swing skill, but I think he should find a spot in the league as an energy defender who can make plays off the catch and also defend multiple positions. At 59, I have Eric Gaines, the 6'2 sophomore out of UAB. Gaines is an incredibly explosive athlete with world-class burst and vertical pop. He's an intense defender and a great passer. He is still quite inefficient and the shot is still a work in progress, but Gaines has consistently improved over the last few years and is super talented, so he should get looks in the second round with a solid combine performance. Next up at 58, I have Muhammad Gay, the 6'11 sophomore out of Washington State. He's a super mobile big with a high degree of skill. He competes defensively and on the glass, can put the ball on the floor, drive or shoot it, and has developed into a pretty impressive passer. So if he shows teams he can consistently shoot it, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets drafted in the early to mid second round. Coming in at 57, I have Jalen Clark, the 6'5 junior out of UCLA. Clark is a menace on the defensive end, his hands are incredible, he moves well and has the ability to defend 1 through 3. He injured his Achilles near the end of the year so wasn't able to show out on the big stage, but if he can become even a passable offensive player, he'll be extremely valuable to an NBA team. Just ahead of him at 56, I have Coleman Hawkins. The 6'10 junior out of Illinois is an excellent passing big man and has shown off his defensive versatility, feel, and shooting touch. I think he could be a riser in the pre-draft process and could definitely carve out a role as a backup big in the league. So I have Coleman Hawkins at 56. At 55, I have Tucker DeVries, the 6'7 Drake sophomore. DeVries is a sniper with a quick shot, soft touch, and great shooting versatility, and he can also be really damaging in the mid-range, but the concerns will surround how he fares against NBA-level athletes, particularly on defense, as he did struggle a bit against better competition, but with his offensive game and shooting ability, he's an NBA talent for sure. At 54, I have Naquan Tomlin, the 6'10 junior out of Kansas State. Tomlin's a raw prospect despite being 22, as he only picked up basketball after high school, but his mobility and fluidity is special. He was a key contributor in Kansas State's Elite Eight run. He's switchable, a great athlete, can hit the three, and had some impressive passing and handling flashes, so I definitely think Naquan Tomlin would be worth taking a swing on in the second round. Next up at 53, I have Oso Igadaro, the 6'9 junior out of Marquette. He's a versatile big man with excellent passing vision and touch. I really like him as a small ball five who can protect the rim, make plays out of the short roll, and hit floaters and hooks as well as dunks. So I have Oso Igadaro at 53. At 52, I have Ricky Council the fourth, the 6'6 junior out of Arkansas. He's another incredible athlete in this class. Council's a strong finisher who relentlessly attacks the cup. The lack of shooting definitely hurts him, but if he ever becomes a respectable shooter, he'll return value much higher than where I currently have him slotted. So I have Ricky Council the fourth at 52. At 51, I have Andre Jackson Jr., the 6'6 wing out of Yukon. Ajax is an elite athlete and a defensive playmaker. He can facilitate, attack the rim, and knock down the occasional three. And he was a huge contributor to the national champions and really made an impact despite the counting stats. So with his performances in the tournament, I think he'll get a lot of interest in the second round. But for now, I have Ajax at 51. At 50, I have Tristan Vukjevic, the 7-foot big man out of Partizan. He's a skilled big who can do a bit of everything offensively. He can knock down the three, play in the pick and roll. He's relatively mobile and can put the ball on the floor. He definitely has some work to do defensively and will probably be stashed if drafted, but I'm a big fan of his long-term NBA upside. At 49, I have Mike Miles Jr., the 6'2 guard out of TCU. Miles is an excellent creator in the pick and roll. He can score from anywhere on the floor, has great touch, and was super efficient around the basket. I really liked him last year as well, and he really stepped it up this season, so I have Mike Miles Jr. at 49. At 48, I have Jalen Slauson, the 6'7 senior out of Furman. 
Slauson's a strong and super versatile forward. He's a monster defender with the size, strength, and foot speed to defend multiple positions. He's got great hands and defensive instincts, and has averaged over three stocks a game for the past two seasons. He's a really good playmaker, can finish inside, and has improved as a shooter. He's an older prospect at 23, but his two-way skill set is perfect for the modern NBA, so I have Jalen Slauson at 48. I have James Naji coming in at 47. The 6'10 big man out of Barcelona is a very raw prospect, but he's a big time athlete with a huge frame at just 18 years old. He's a strong play finisher and an imposing shot blocker with good mobility and a 7 foot 7 wingspan. I'm a fan of his game and think there's a chance someone really likes him as a late first or early second round guy, but for now I have James Naji at 47. At 46, I have Nikola Juricic, the 6'8 wing out of Mega. Juricic struggled with injury and the shot has been off for a lot of the season, but he's a high field big wing with great vision and a ton of shot creation potential. He's been very inconsistent and has a lot of work to do on defense, but 6'8 guys with his skill set are very rare, so he could still go pretty high in the draft, but on this board, I have Nikola Juricic at 46. At the top of tier 7 at 45, I have Reese Beekman, the 6'3 junior out of Virginia. Beekman's an incredible point of attack defender with excellent hands and defensive instincts. He's a great passer and the shot looked good this year, albeit on low volume. He still has issues finishing and creating in the half court, but with a weaker lead guard class, I wouldn't be surprised if he was drafted in the early second round. Now moving on to tier 6, which is a smaller tier with my prospects ranked 44 through 35. Starting off tier 6 at 44, I have Kobe Brown, the 6'8 senior out of Missouri. Brown's a well-rounded physical forward and a high field connector that consistently makes the right plays. This season, he drastically improved as a shooter, and whilst I don't think it's sustainable, I really buy him being a solid shooter, and with his skill set and versatility, Kobe Brown should be on a lot of teams' radars in the second round. Coming in at 43, I have Trace Jackson Davis, the 6'9 senior out of Indiana. He was one of the best players in college basketball. TJD makes an impact on both ends of the floor. He can post up, is great in the pick and roll, and can set up his teammates. Defensively, he moves pretty well, has a 7-3 wingspan, and is a great shot blocker. So I think Trace Jackson Davis is ready for the NBA, and will be able to make an impact from day one with his energy, athleticism, and skill. And that's why I have him at 43. Just out of him at 42, I have Terrence Shannon Jr., the 6'6 wing out of Illinois. TSJ is an excellent athlete and a terror in transition, and his burst and speed in the half court is a real weapon. He can shoot the three, drive, and pass off a live dribble, and he's also very active on defense. He's been on draft radars for a while, and I think he's ready to make the NBA jump, so I have Terrence Shannon Jr. at 42. Next up at 41, I have Rayon Rupert, the 6'6 wing out of the New Zealand Breakers. Rupert was great in the preseason, but really struggled over the rest of his time in the NBL. But he's an excellent defensive prospect with a 7'3 wingspan, as well as an intriguing offensive game, although he is still very raw. I'm quite low on him comparatively, and think he's a bit further away than a lot of people think, so I have Rayon Rupert at 41. At 40, I have Donovan Klingon, the 7'2 freshman out of UConn. Klingon's a monster shot blocker with incredible timing and instincts, and he posted an absurd 14.4 block percentage this season. He's also a phenomenal rebounder and a super efficient inside scorer. I think there's a decent chance he returns for his sophomore year, but with the recent success of Walker Kessler, I think Donovan Klingon's someone who could fill a similar role in the NBA, so even having him at 40 might be a bit low, but that's where Donovan Klingon sits for now. At 39, I have Trey Alexander, the 6'4 sophomore out of Creighton. He's a crafty scorer and a great shot creator. Alexander had some huge performances where he showed off a ton of shot versatility. He can play both guard spots, attack closeouts, and has developed into a really good defensive player, so should be a great bet in the second round. At 38, I have Julian Strother, the 6'7 wing out of Gonzaga. Julian Strother is just simply a really good basketball player. He's had some huge performances, he's a great shooter, and he's just an efficient scorer from all over the floor. He'll need to improve as a passer and defender to be a high minute NBA guy, but should get looks in the early second round regardless. Coming in at 37, I have Brandon Pajemski, the 6'5 sophomore out of Santa Clara. Pods is a super well-rounded offensive guard with three-level scoring ability. He's a really incredible shooter who can shoot off the catch and off the bounce. He's crafty, a great passer, and a competitive defender and rebounder. And overall, he's just a really impressive prospect who could rise for me as I watch more of his games. But for now, I have Brandon Pajemski at 37. 
At 36, I have a Dan Boner, the 6'10 freshman out of UCLA. Boner is a phenomenal athlete who can protect the rim and just outwork the opposition. However, he is strictly a play finisher at the moment and struggled with fouls, so I could see him returning to boost his stock for the 2024 draft. But for now, if he stays in, I have a Dan Boner at 36. At the top of tier 6 at 35, I have Bilal Koulibaly, the 6'7 wing out of the Mets 92. Koulibaly is quite a raw prospect, but there's been some incredible flashes on both ends of the floor. He's a great athlete and has a ridiculous 7'3 wingspan. He hasn't played a ton of minutes against top competition, but he's been dominating in under 21s, getting to the rim at ease, draining threes, and being a disruptive defender. So I think he could be a huge riser throughout the rest of the cycle and potentially a first round pick. But for now, I have Bilal Koulibaly rounding off tier 6 at 35. Moving on to tier 5 with my prospects ranked 34 through 23. At 34, I have Deron Holmes II, the 6'10 sophomore out of Dayton. Holmes is a super quick and mobile big who can play multiple roles both offensively and defensively. He can protect the rim, switch, has soft touch and a nice looking jumper. He's also improved a lot as a passer. And overall, he's just a super skilled athletic big man whose game should translate seamlessly to the NBA. So I have Deron Holmes II at 34. Just out of him at 33, I have Kyle Filipowski, the 6'11 freshman out of Duke. I like Flip's overall game. He's got great size and mobility. His defense both inside and in space was solid and his high level of skill is evident. He struggled with efficiency and against more competitive teams. And I think with another year, he could be a lotto guy next season. But for now, I have Kyle Filipowski at 33. At 32, I have Marcus Sasser, the 6'2 senior out of Houston. I'm not usually a fan of undersized older guards, but Marcus Sasser is just elite. He's an excellent shooter and shot creator, a really good point of attack defender, and has improved a lot as a passer, and his touch and finishing craft is really solid as well. So Marcus Sasser comes in at 32. Amani Bates comes in at 31. The 6'10 Eastern Michigan sophomore is one of the more polarizing prospects in years. He put up some incredible performances where he completely took over games, including one where he scored 29 straight points. He still has issues creating separation and staying locked in defensively, but I'm still a huge fan of his and believe there's a chance he develops into a star, but his shooting and shot making will be beneficial off the bench even if he doesn't reach that outcome, so that's why I have Amoni Bates at 31. Just ahead of him at 30, I have Judah Mintz, the 6'3 freshman out of Syracuse. Mintz had a very impressive freshman season. He's got great burst, gets to the rim at ease, and has soft touch inside. He's also improved a ton as a playmaker, and the three-point shot looks solid to end the season. And that's definitely the swing skill, but he's got smooth mechanics and is a bucket in the mid-range. So I'm relatively confident his shot will develop. So I really like his upside, but he could also return to attempt to lock in his top 20 status in the 2024 draft. But for now, I have Judah Mintz at 30. Coming in at 29, I have Chris Murray, the 6'8 junior out of Iowa. He's obviously a similar player to his brother, but I think there are also some pretty significant differences. He can shoot it from deep, score in the paint, and find open teammates. He's not the defensive player Keegan is, and will be almost 23 on draft night. And I also don't think he has quite the upside Keegan does, but he's still a very good prospect in his own right. So for now, I have Chris Murray at 29. At 28, I have Leonard Miller, the 6'10 forward out of the G League Ignite. Miller was the most consistent prospect for the Ignite. He looked great as a big, play-finishing wing and tertiary scorer. His shot still needs to be reworked, but his touch is incredible, so I think he'll figure it out. He's huge, super mobile, and made an impact on both ends of the floor, so I think he's for sure a first-round talent, and I could probably have him a bit higher, but for now, I have Leonard Miller at 28. Just out of him at 27, I have his Ignite teammate, Sidi Sissoko. I really love Sissoko's game. He's a 6'8 athletic wing with amazing vision and strength. He's unstoppable with a runway, has improved as a shooter, and can defend 2 through 4, although he is very foul prone. He'll need time and reps to be effective in the half court, and I think he could use some more time in the G League, but in the right spot, he could develop into a really good two-way player. At 26, I have Jordan Walsh, the 6'7 freshman out of Arkansas. I'm not sure if Walsh will stay in the draft or return for his sophomore year, as he struggled a fair bit offensively, but he was really impressive defensively, has an insane 7'3 wingspan, along with the instincts and IQ to be a great defender. And in a simplified role with NBA spacing, I think Jordan Walsh would thrive, but I think there's still some more to his game he's yet to consistently show, so I would definitely take Jordan Walsh in the late first round. At 25, I have Noah Clowney, the 6'10 freshman out of Alabama. Clowney has awesome tools and is an excellent defender. 
He moves well in space, is good with angles, and has great hands and defensive instincts. He might be a bit of a longer term project, but I like what he can do in the pick and roll. The jumper looks clean, and he's got pretty soft touch. So right now, I have Noah Clowney at 25. Next up at 24, I have Colby Jones, the 6'6 junior out of Xavier. Jones is a skilled wing that can score on all three levels and more than holds his own on the defensive end. He has good size at 6'6, is efficient from all over the floor and he has great passing feel. He just contributes in so many ways, so it's hard to see him not being a good NBA player. So I have Colby Jones at 24. At the top of tier 5 at 23, I have Turquavion Smith, the 6'4 sophomore out of NC State. After a very up and down season, Turk could really regain some hype with some strong pre-draft workouts. He's an NBA caliber shot creator with incredibly deep range, and is comfortable playing on or off the ball. He still has to get a lot stronger and finish better inside, but Turquavion Smith has the talent to be a really good scoring guard in the league, and that's why I have him at the top of tier 5 at 23. Now on to tier 4 with my prospects ranked 22 through 8. Starting off tier 4 at 22, I have Jordan Hawkins, the 6'5 sophomore out of UConn. The national champion is an excellent shooter in every way imaginable. He's a lead off movement and that's what he'll hang his hat on. He's had some impressive moments defensively and made a few nice passing reads. And I think he could be a really good 4th or 5th starter. So I have Jordan Hawkins at 22. Just ahead of him at 21, I have Jalen Huchifino, the 6'6 Indiana freshman. JHS has intriguing upside as a big guard who can operate out of the pick and roll, create for himself, and set up his teammates. He was quite inconsistent, but when he's on, he looks like a star. He can be a bit contact averse and struggle finishing inside, and his decision making can be a bit iffy, but I think he'll impress a lot of teams, and I can see a team taking him in the late lotto to mid first round range. Coming in at 20, I have Maxwell Lewis, the 6'7 sophomore out of Pepperdine. Max Lewis was pretty underwhelming in conference play, and that probably hurt his draft stock, but I still have him in this tier as I think the athleticism, shooting versatility, and self-creation upside is too great to drop much further. He's also progressed as a passer, but defensively he'll have to improve to earn minutes in the league, so for now I have Max Lewis at 20. At 19, I have the 6'4 sophomore out of Michigan, Kobe Bufkin. He's been getting a lot of hype recently and for a very good reason. He's a high field guard comfortable playing on or off the ball, a shifty creator and an excellent finisher at the rim. He's improving as a shooter and has a very smooth pull up. He plays hard on both ends and has a versatile skill set to fit in with NBA talent. So I definitely think there's a chance he rises into lotto discussions and I think there's a real chance he returns lottery value. But for now I have Kobe Bufkin at 19. Coming in at 18, I have Derek Lively II, the 7-1 freshman out of Duke. Lively didn't contribute much from a scoring point of view outside of play finishing, but his passing was really cool to see, and defensively he's amongst the best in the class with his mobility and incredible shot blocking timing and instincts. He's shown he can shoot it in the past, and I think there's a lot more to his game yet to be unlocked, so I have Derek Lively II at 18. Grady Dick is on my board at 17. The 6'8 Kansas freshman is an incredible shooter, and he's just a great connector who makes winning plays. He has some work to do defensively and is limited as a self creator, but Grady's skill set as a shooter and off ball connector is very rare and valuable, and that's why I have him at 17. Just out of him at 16, I have Bryce Sensabar, the 6'6 Ohio State freshman. Bryce is an absolute bucket, he's a super efficient jump shooter from the mid range and from three. He's improved as a passer and can get up and punch one on you as well. He does settle for a lot of contested jumpers and has a fair way to go on the defensive end, but there's a lot to like and he's a special shooter and shot maker, so I have Bryce Sensabar at 16. Next up at 15, I have Nick Smith Jr., the 6'5 freshman out of Arkansas. Obviously, he's a bucket, can shoot it from deep, and has incredible touch on his floaters, but he's had some struggles defending on the perimeter and creating space off the bounce, and was very inconsistent over the course of the season with high highs and very low lows. But I'm still a fan of his upside, and I think he'll make more of them off the dribble shots in the league. So for now, I have Nick Smith Jr. at 15. Next up at 14, I have Jet Howard, the 6'8 freshman out of Michigan. Jet Howard is an excellent shooter who also had some really nice moments creating for himself, and I really like what he can do off handoff actions. His balance, vision, and defensive consistency could be better, but there's a lot to work with, and I think he has a very good chance of being selected in the lottery. So I have Jet Howard at 14. 
Coming in at 13, I have Anthony Black, the 6'7 freshman out of Arkansas. I really like Anthony Black's game. He's a phenomenal passer with excellent size and feel. He's one of the best defenders in the class and a big time athlete. The jump shot is a swing skill for sure, and the lack of shooting limits him as a driver and half court creator, but I would definitely bet on his size, athleticism, and feel, so I have Anthony Black at 13. Gigi Jackson II comes in at 12. I'm a huge believer in Gigi Jackson's upside. The 6'10 South Carolina freshman is the youngest guy in the class, and the flashes of his handle and self-creation ability are really impressive. I buy his three-point shot translating, he can finish inside, and he's had some good moments defending in space and protecting the rim. Gigi is definitely a long-term project, but I think in a good NBA development system, he could become a great player, so I have Gigi Jackson II at 12. Next up at 11, I have Taylor Hendricks, the 6'9 freshman out of UCF. Hendricks had an incredible freshman season. He shot almost 40% from three, finished well inside, and was impactful guarding in space and as a rim protector. Hendricks just has a perfect skill set to fit on almost every team, so I think he should be heavily considered in the second half of the lottery. But for now, I have Taylor Hendricks at 11. Next, I have probably one of my hotter takes, which is Dariq Whitehead at 10. The 6'7 Duke freshman had a really rough season with multiple injuries, limited minutes, and adjusting roles, but he still showcased his top tier ability as a shot creator and shooter, and he had some promising defensive games as well, particularly towards the end of the season. Overall, he is a difficult eval, he struggled getting to the rim, and didn't get back to his high school level of burst and explosion, but I really believe Dariq is capable of a lot more whilst being a great 3 and D player, and I think he'll be a steal if he slides as low as he's projected to. Coming in at 9, I have Keontae George, the 6'4 freshman out of Baylor. Keontae George is just a bucket. He's one of the most versatile shooters in the draft, and he has a very deep bag. He's impressed me with his playmaking and quick reads, and he had some really intriguing defensive possessions, especially early on in the season. Keontae was very inconsistent, and his numbers kind of dived with a few poor games he wasn't 100% in, but I really buy his long-term NBA upside, and I think he could be a star in the league, so I have Keontae George as my 9th ranked prospect. At the top of tier 4 at 8, I have Kaysen Wallace, the 6'4 Kentucky freshman. I'm a huge fan of Kaysen's game. He plays lockdown defense, can shoot it, set up his teammates, and finish inside. And he just looks like another Kentucky yard who will elevate his game in the league. So I have Kaysen Wallace as my top prospect in tier 4 coming in at 8. Now moving on to tier 3 with my prospects ranked 7 through 4. I think this is probably the tier with the biggest gap outside of 1. And in my opinion, there's a pretty clear top 7, it's just about the order. But anyway, at 7, I have Brandon Miller, the 6'9 freshman out of Alabama. The SEC Player of the Year had an outstanding freshman year. He's a phenomenal shooter, has good passing feel, always plays solid defense, and has improved a ton as a driver and finisher. He still struggles against physicality and athleticism, which will be even more of an issue in the league, but his handle and shooting gravity should mitigate this a little bit. And if you think of him as a complimentary scorer, his projection starts to look a whole lot better, as he'll be able to do what he does best and really contribute to winning. So with that, I have Brandon Miller at 7. Just ahead of him at 6, I have Jarris Walker, the 6'8 freshman out of Houston. Jarris is a monster defensively with a really intriguing offensive game. He can drain spot up threes, attack the glass, and facilitate. And I like his upside as a self-creator given his touch, strength, and handle, but he will need to be more assertive. Jarris Walker is just a really cool prospect who will make an impact on both ends from day one, so I currently have him at 6. Coming in at 5, I have Asar Thompson, the 6'7 wing out of the Overtime Elite. I just did a full scouting report on Asar, so if you want to check that out for an in-depth breakdown, I'll put a card up or something. But in short, Asar Thompson was excellent this season. He won the OTE MVP and Finals MVP. He's a ridiculous athlete and a scary defensive prospect with a tight handle and some intriguing shot creation upside. His jumper has also consistently improved and he hit 15 threes in his final four playoff games. Yes, the competition level will be talked about and he is a bit older, but Asar is still an elite prospect despite his flaws and I have him in my top five. Now at the top of tier three at four, I have Cam Whitmore, the 6'7 freshman out of Villanova. In my opinion, Cam Whitmore is the best college prospect in the draft. He's a dominant driver with incredible strength, burst, and good touch. He's drastically improved as a shooter and hit 40% of his catch and shoot threes. And he also had some intriguing handling and creation flashes. I'm also a big fan of his defensive upside. He's quick, strong, and has excellent hands. 
so I think he could develop into a two-way star. And that is why Cam Whitmore is at the top of tier 3 and 4th overall. Now moving on to tier 2 with my 2nd and 3rd ranked guys. Coming in at 3, I have Amen Thompson, the 6-7 guard out of the overtime elite. Amen had a great season for the best team in the league. Absolutely no one can stop him getting downhill. The handle looks a bit tighter, he was great defensively, and he's also the best playmaker in the draft. And whilst his shooting is extremely inconsistent, he also had some really smooth looking shots, and his touch is solid, so I think it's workable. The competition level isn't ideal as he played against younger guys, but again, he is a top 3 basketball athlete of all time, dominated pro teams in the offseason, and is immensely talented, so he's right up there pushing for a top 2 spot. And for me, Amen Thompson is a top 3 lock. My second best prospect in the draft is Scoot Henderson, the 6'3 guard out of the G League Ignite. Scoot is just an incredible prospect and I'm confident he'll be great from the jump. He didn't have the season he's capable of and was constantly battling injury, but he's proven he can be dominant against high level competition. He's an elite playmaker, an incredible athlete and a fiery competitor. Henderson will tear defenses up with his burst, decision making and pull up shooting. And I think he'll even finish better inside when teams can't just pack the paint. So I'm all in on Scoot. There should be no doubt that he's the number two guy in this class and he's just a really special prospect. So moving on to tier 1 with the one. Obviously at 1 I have Victor Wembanyama, the 7-5 big man out of the Mets 92. At this point not much needs to be said, Wemby is a generational talent and has been even better than I expected. He can finish, create for himself and for others and is an extremely versatile defender and his shooting touch is excellent. He's continued to work on his body and as he gets more comfortable with his frame he's going to get better and better. Victor Wembanyama is one of the greatest prospects of all time and I cannot wait to see what he does in the league. Alright so that is my big board 3.0 post March Madness. Let me know what you thought down below, comment your opinions and thoughts, I'll make sure to reply. If you enjoyed the video leave a like and subscribe for more. I've got more draft and NBA content coming soon so stay tuned. And that's all I got for this one. Jebby Hoops out.